Using servos to flap the wings gives many advantages, but some people want to build ornithopters really small with rapidly beating wings. Can we do that with servos and how far can we go? I wanted to see how small you can make a servo-driven ornithopter. This is what I came up with. I'm going to give you a look at how I built this and then we'll see how it flies. I'm Nathan Cronister and welcome to the Ornithopter Zone. Most of the ornithopters that I've built using servos to flap the wings, they use a standard size servo that weighs about 70 grams. For this project, I found some servos that weigh under 2 grams, so that's 40 times smaller. One of the biggest challenges in this project is that these small servos, they don't have as much power, even for their weight, compared with a good standard size servo. The first servo here is the one that I chose. If you look at the specs, you can see it has a lot faster speed and more torque than some other similar size servos. I showed one of the linear servos just for comparison. Not really practical because you can't attach the wing directly to the servo. You need an additional connecting rod hinge. It'll end up not being a good option. One advantage of using servos to flap the wings in a tiny ornithopter like this is that it keeps the whole thing really simple and easy to build. Since you're using the wings for steering, you don't need any steering mechanism in the tail. The construction is super simple. The wing spars attach directly to the servo arms. For the control unit, I made a small circuit board which holds a PIC 12F683 microcontroller and it's mounted on top of a tiny receiver from Orange RX. The Ornithopter has a 20 inch wingspan and it weighs 11.6 grams. It's not really that small compared with some other ornithopters that have been built. You're limited by the size of commercially available servos. And then also the servo just can't move as fast as a crank mechanism. That would give you access to smaller, more rapidly beating wings than what you can do with servos. Here are some of the smallest ornithopters with a crank mechanism. The two RC examples each weigh about a gram. And if you're going to use rubber band power, you can get even lighter. At first glance, it's going to look like any other ornithopter as it's flying along, but it has the variable amplitude flapping. It uses the wings to steer. So there are some fancy things going on that you might not have noticed. Let's take a look. The flapping rate stays the same throughout this flight. When we get ready to land, it's the angle of the wings flapping, the amplitude, that's going to decrease. And that gives you a much smoother descent compared with flapping the wings really slow through a bigger angle. You can control the flapping rate too, but it's more about finding the best value and just leaving it there. In this next flight, you'll see me trying out some different flapping rates. And what I have found is that it's the slowest one that actually works best for this particular ornithopter. If you can figure out why, post your ideas in the comments, because I'd like to hear what people's thoughts are.
Have you ever heard of a dual mode servo? I was able to get some of these from Servo City for my next project. The dual mode servo is a really unique product from Servo City. It can operate just like a regular servo where it moves back and forth, but it also has a continuous rotation mode. So it can just keep spinning around and around. So I thought, what if I build a dual mode ornithopter? In servo mode, it will operate just like a servo driven ornithopter. And in continuous rotation mode, it'll operate just like a conventional gearbox driven ornithopter. We'll get to see these two methods go head to head in the same ornithopter and we'll see which one works better. Click on the subscribe button so you can find out what's going to happen.